Football on Off The Ball With Paddy Power The greatest football partnership since Shearer and Owen Now last night's live coverage of Liverpool's 2-0 win over Sheffield United at Anfield on Off The Ball meant that we had to delay our chat uh, with John Giles the first of the year no less by 24 hours so I'm delighted to say that John Giles joins us on the line now uh, Happy New Year to you John and you, Richie, all our listeners. Um, I'm judging just by the uh, the brief chat that I had that I had with you earlier on that you did nothing but watch football over the Christmas <laughs> yeah. time. Was... Plenty, plenty of games, uh, uh, Richie, and, and, and obviously you can record them now, so you, you're not, you're not going to miss much. But as you know, there were, there were plenty uh, plenty of matches over the, the Christmas period. How are you watching a game back that's not live? Because it's, it's something actually that I've always struggled with. I remember recording a couple of European games back in the day whereby... You know, you kind of know the result, or you know that there is a result, so you actually can't help fast forward and through what some might call the boring bits. Like, are you a patient watcher of a game that's not live? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so, uh, Richie. I do a fast forward now and again. You know, when, the, when there's a, uh, a stoppage or, or something, I, I, I do f- fast forward it. And certainly, if I look say the last fifty minutes, somebody's winning four nil, then I can I can stop watching it. You know. Yeah. Interesting one. Anyway, yeah, Liverpool last night, 2-0 winners over Sheffield United, a 13-point lead now for yeah. Jurgen Klopp's side with a game in hand over yeah. Leicester City. Added another point onto that as well for the lead over uh, Manchester City. Uh, it's it's quite incredible this role that Liverpool are on. They've now gone a full 365 days, a full year since their last defeat in the Premier League. It's difficult to see where the next one is actually going to come from. It's their consistency, I guess, has taken a lot of people uh, has been the main sticking point, I guess, for, for people this season as regards Liverpool. That level of consistency, that level of performance, Chris Wilder mentioned it last night, the Sheffield United manager after the game, that the way Liverpool work is a testament to how they've done so far this year. Yeah, well, you know, all the top teams over the years, Richie, they don't get to where they got the great Liverpool teams of the past and the Manchester United teams of the past. The first thing is the work ethic. You know, you have to, week in, week out, you know, you can see inconsistencies in certain teams uh, this year. You know, Chelsea in particular, you know, they, they, they do well against big teams and they don't do so well. Uh, now, they don't have the quality of players that Manchester United had or Liverpool have today. But this, apart from the quality, uh, Richie, it's, it's week in, week out. You know, you, everybody can have a bad game, but you, you, you don't have to stop trying. Trying your best, trying your best, trying your best. And they demand it of each other. Obviously, uh, with Klopp and Ferguson and all these great managers, Guardiola uh, demanded this level of effort week in and week out. Sometimes you don't play so well, but you'll still win. And that's what uh, Klopp has done there. Obviously, he's first thing, they got a lot of great players in, uh, Richie. And then they get them to work hard week in and week out. And that's what Klopp has done. He's, he's definitely got a terrific squad of players in now. Uh, he, can, he can rotate uh, quite a bit. Uh, but anybody that comes in has to put the, to put the effort in uh, and anybody that's even established in the team, I think he demands it of them as all the great managers do. So that's where you get the consistency from, Richie. Mm. One of the things that uh, Nathan pointed out in commentary last night when we had the game was that you know, for a great period of that match last night, Liverpool only had a 1-0 lead. In previous years, when Liverpool would have a 1-0 lead at Anfield's, the home crowd would have cause enough to get a bit anx- anxious, get a bit antsy, a bit nervous about what might come in the last 20 minutes. That sense seems to have gone. Obviously, with the results they've had over the year, there's every reason for that to happen. How difficult well, a thing, a cultural thing, is that to change well, within well, a club? Well, the main thing is, the reason that they were a bit worried about certain situations, because they had a dodgy goalkeeper for a long time. They didn't have Van Dijk. They didn't have the left back, you know. They, they didn't have these particular players. That, that's that's what's made the huge difference uh, to them. The, you know, they're really, really quality players. Uh, and you know, you can remember over the only two years ago, the goalkeeper was making all sorts of mistakes. We had Moreno at left back. Uh, there's nobody in the centre, the, the central defensive positions. You know, he, he's put all that right along with the attitude. But you have to have the players as well. Mm. And uh, two or three years ago, I think they were entitled to be worried. Uh, Liverpool supporters because they were leaking yeah. poor, poor goals. That's not happening now, Richie. You know, they're very, very good. The salt at the back, salt at midfield. They've got the lads up front, as we know. Uh, you know, he's got a really, really strong squad of players there. If you're a player, does that like confidence feed throughout the side? I'm talking in terms of that change of what Liverpool had at the back. Like, they had 
for years, you know, a, a noticeably ropey defence. They a goalkeeper yeah. in Loris Carius last time out who wasn't obviously uh, up to snuff. Yeah. Does that feed down through the team then when you have somebody like Van Dyke last night who I don't think was called into action until like the seventy something minute. Yeah. But when he was, he absolutely looked imperious and there's no there's basically no yeah. reason to panic ever with that side. No, well that, that's what that's what great players do. You know, like if if, if for example they had uh, uh, terrific players and they hadn't didn't have a goal scorer, then you'd be worried about scoring goals. Now they have Salah and Firmino and uh, Mane and all these great players that they have midfield. They have it. You know they wouldn't be doing what they're doing if they didn't have these players in the side. And obviously, if you've got great players at the back, then the lads up front are not quite as anxious. The lads in midfield are not quite as anxious. And particularly your goalkeeper. Mm. Uh, you know, don't we get in the Champions League final two years ago? It was the goalkeeper that let them down. You know, they, they, you know they, obviously they got Van Dijk uh, and Ro- Robertson at left by Robertson is terrific. Uh, you know, they're, they're three players that they didn't have defensively a couple of years ago, Richie. So they were always going to be a bit dodgy. Mm. One of those people who exemplifies work rate and attitudes and all those positives is Jordan Henderson. Uh, we heard David Myler, we played it out there earlier on, and we heard it last night in the show as well. David was alongside Nathan for, for commentary in the match. And he says that he was actually, you know, and still is, uh, mates with Jordan Henderson and was on the phone to him when Brendan Rodgers came into the room to suggest that Henderson be used as a make-way for a deal to bring Clint Dempsey from Fulham to Liverpool. And this has gone back six or seven years, and it shows yeah. where Jordan Henderson has been, whereby he was on the outs and regarded as a make to now be yeah. club captain, and somebody whose performances are probably amongst the best at the club at the moment. Well, I wouldn't put him as one of the leaders and uh, leading players in the club. I think he's, he has improved. Uh, I think he's uh, actually. I think the players around him have made him better rather than the other way around, Richie. That's my take on him. Now, I don't want to be cruel to him. He does his stuff, uh, but I think the players around him have have made him uh, better. But he's responded well to Klopp. I mean, six or seven years, he was quite a young fella. He has matured like most most players do, and he, he is definitely an asset as most of the other players who are in the Liverpool team are to the team. There's no passengers in that team. Mm. Well, uh, and plus, what's what's on the subs bench in the squad? You know, this is what's that's that's what's really really God. Uh, what Klopp has done a great job. You know, and against Everton there a few weeks ago, he had the courage to leave what three or four of his major players out to bring some of the squad in, and they still won four one. So. You know, they've got a great squad of players. Klopp has done a tremendous job for them. So they're the team to beat, and they look like the team to team to beat for uh, the coming years. I'm curious, John, what do you think Henderson might be lacking? Um, well, I think what he's lacked over the years, he's a midfield player, uh, as we know. Mm-hmm. I, I always think he's, you know, gets the ball is sideways, sideways, sideways. Uh, and but this year he, he is better. He is creating more goals, uh, Richie. Mm. I, I don't, you know, I don't see him as a leading creative midfield player. He's a good worker. He's a good squad player. Uh, but I mean, when when he's playing alongside Salah and uh, Van Dijk and Robertson and all these terrific players, I mean, it, it's bound to make anybody a better player. Like Ronaldo, I think, is a better player for them now than he was at Newcastle. Because great players around you make you a better player, and 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 that's the way that's the way all they all help each other doing that. Uh, I asked you this, I think, a couple of weeks ago, and I don't think the answer is going to change. It's Thirteen points, you could probably make it sixteen if they win their game in hand. There's there's no catching them at this point. Uh, no, I don't think there's anybody going to catch them. I mean, they played the nearest team to them a couple of weeks ago against Leicester and gave them right height. They're just the best team in the league, which by a long way, you know, mm. Manchester City is the only team. That that would, that would before the season started were, were probably well the only ones that could really challenge them, and we can see that Manchester City are not what they were last year, and with the points lead they have, the way they work and the way they, I can't see them, I can't see them being, being beaten by anybody. Now that that's a, there's a long way to go in the season, but I, there's definitely no way, in my opinion, that anybody could catch them. I guess that performance away to Leicester underlines how far Liverpool are ahead of everybody else. I mean, Leicester yeah. are viewed as their closest challengers this season and have played really good football in their own right. Yeah. And, Liver- and Liverpool dominated as much as they dominated sides like Sheffield United last night who aren't used to being dominated in games the way they were. Oh, they, they will totally. Well, they killed, uh, they killed Leicester, but there's nobody there to touch them. And apart from the, the only problem that happens any season when you get injuries, but he's got a big squad that can cover them, uh, Richie, mm. which is great. 
you know, like, and he can rest them and he can give them a, a break. I mean, but there, there was a lot of talk before Christmas, the Christmas uh, program there, that this could be a very, very difficult time for Liverpool because they had to go abroad and play in the in in, in the big champ, the, the the cup abroad and that, and they had a lot of fixtures. But they've 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 gone through that because he was able to rest players, and the players coming in are good enough to to carry on and and win matches for them. That that's what they're in the squad for. And he's done that, so so he has actually prepared for the the fixture list that's come along. Are any any injury problems? Unless he gets a really really bad amount of injuries, but I can't see that happening to him more than anybody else. Richard. Yeah, Naby Keita was the latest one last night. He picked up an injury during the warm up. Um, Klopp's actually spoken today um, ahead of that Merseyside derby FA Cup third round tie with Everton saying that um, the FA really need to look at their festive scheduling because the amount the sheer volume of games and I know this is nothing new uh, the sheer volume of games is asking a hell of a lot of uh, of players um, one of those players to pick up an injury over the course of the festive season of course is Harry Kane the uh, the Tottenham striker looks like he's going to be out for up to six weeks he's going to miss uh, games with uh, Liverpool and Manchester City as a result possibly their next Champions League outing as well a huge loss for him, a potential opportunity for Troy Parrott. Jose Mourinho is saying today that Parrott could feature against Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. 17 years of age, do you feel he's someone who's ready to step into the Harry Kane breach? I haven't seen him play, uh, Richie. Well, I hear good reports about him. Uh, I, I wouldn't be worried about the age element of it. If he's good enough, definitely uh, you know, put him into the team. You know, the lads, lads before, there's loads of lads of 17 before, which are 18, have got into a team. Like, you know, in football, 17, 18, 19, 20 particularly, is not a young age. Mm. You know, you want to be showing your, showing your marks. And if they have the temperament, uh, and I, I always notice with, with, with terrific players that come in young, they have the temperament anyway. It's, it's natural to them to be able to play in these situations, uh, Richie. And then, uh, you know, obviously you don't expect them never going to be the finished player, but they can be good enough to go in and play and do a job for you. That, that's my experience of, of, of young players. If they're good enough, you put them in yeah. and you give them a chance. And, and this situation, it, maybe it's, it's the ideal time. If he's coming in for a cup tie, it's not like a vital league match. Uh, and, it, it, you know, if they're good enough, they're young enough. It's like a lad who is 34 years of age. Is he good enough? Then the age doesn't matter. And I found that with young players as well. It's a strange one because Mourinho was saying today he was asked whether or not Parrot would benefit from going out on loan, maybe not even this month, but perhaps in the summer, um, to develop him still further. Because obviously his chance for games is going to be limited. Mourinho suggested that he's going to work with the options that he has, i.e. Son and, and Mora, etc., to fill that gap left by Kane and that Parrot might have to either you know, content himself with the substitutes place or maybe not even making the match day squad as he hasn't actually for the last four games. Would you see a loan as being something that Parrot might pursue himself? Mourinho seems to think that he's too young to go out on loan. Um, I'm always doubtful about the loan situation, uh, Richie. It depends where you go. Mm. You know, you could go to a club that uh, the manager is no good and the coaches around them are no good and they can do more harm than good. Do you know what I mean? Like if I was a manager, I'd be I'd be reluctant unless I was I knew that the, the the manager that I was loaning the player to, that I could trust him, that he'd be telling them the right things. Uh, you know, it's 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 it, it, it can be a bit dodgy, Richie. I mean, don't forget, uh, Harry Kane was out and loaned for about seven or eight different clubs. Now I'm not so sure any of them did him any good because he, he didn't come back to Spurs and get in the team and progress from there. Actually, he was back at Spurs when he progressed, I think, under Harry Redknapp or one or two other coaches. So I'd always be wary of I think I think, I think in principle, it's good if it's gone to the right place. We've seen before players who've gone away from their parent clubs and Jack Byrne, I guess, is the player that springs to mind. I mean, he was developed at Manchester City and ended up bouncing around a couple of lower league teams. And yeah. I guess the style of football that a Jack Byrne might want to play isn't necessarily the kind of play that will get Oldham results, for instance, in League One or League Two or wherever they happen to be that year. And that's the situation that you might find with a Parrot, I guess, is that they're sent down yeah. to the Championship and they're kicked lumps at and they're being asked to, yeah. to latch on to long right. balls. It's just not the way that you would develop You've got to be careful where you go on loan. I think yeah. going on loan in principle is good if you're going to a manager and a coaching system that, that you can trust to do because you see lots, lots of coaches have different ideas about the football about how to play football and, and systems and all the various things and you get a top player like, like Parrot seems to be a, a, certainly a, a very promising lad goes in there 
and he's been told a load of rubbish. Mm. You know, I'd rather, to be honest, I'd rather keep the player in, in, in my club and know that my coaching staff is going to be good around him and, and, and ask him to be patient. But you could also introduce them into, into the team. Which is like, this is an ideal situation for Mourinho. Uh, to inter- if, if it's a cup tie, to introduce, and you, you see exactly what he can do with the players that you have. You know, in football as well, you're only as good as the players you have around you. And if you're playing with good players, then you, then then he'll be able to show his stuff. Is, but uh, is, you know, you never know. Like Mourinho hasn't been hasn't been hasn't got a, a, a great reputation of bringing on young players, uh, Richie. I yeah. know he's brought on one or two, but not many. You know, because he, he's in a situation that he has to be in a winning situation. And in fact, you know, just just talking about him from the other day in, at the match in Southampton, like he, he moaned about the, uh, one of the ball boys. He moaned about. Uh, uh, what was the player's name, Richie? I mentioned to you early on. One of the uh, Otangi uh, and Dombele, yeah. And Dombele, you know, like the things he said about him. He's injured. He's not injured. He plays one week, and he's he's not he's not he's he's, he's interest. He's, he's no interest again. Then he plays, and then he plays another match. You know, like that's the things sort of things he was doing at Manchester United when things weren't going well. So, like, how's that player going to feel now? Is he going to give him his best? But anyway, that's, I know that's getting away from it. But that's Mourinho. At his worst, you know, yeah. when things are not going well, he hits out. And that's what happened to him at Manchester United. And hopefully, for the Spurs, it won't happen there. But as far as Parrott is concerned, I said, I haven't seen him play. But what I hear about him, Richie, he's, he's, he's an excellent player, as there are quite a few excellent players in the, the younger element that we have mm. um, with the under-21s and that. So I'd love to see him get a chance and, and see exactly what he can do. But I wouldn't be worried about his age. If he's good enough, he'd be in there and do his stuff. All right, John, we'll have more from John Giles up after this very short break. Football on Off The Ball with Paddy Power. The greatest football partnership since Shearer and Owen. Football on Off The Ball With Paddy Power The greatest football partnership since Shearer and Owen And you're very welcome back John Giles joins us on the line to look back on what has been uh, and will continue to be obviously with the FA Cup third round this weekend a busy period in the football calendar Mikel Arteta, John, got off to a winning start as Arsenal manager the other night a 2-0 victory over Manchester United I guess the kind of ideal start one against, against one of their old foes at the Emirates and there seemed to be um, an improvement at least in attitude from Arsenal which is the very least that they needed uh, given the Yeah well that's your starting right point Richie if you don't have a good attitude you're not going to do anything and you had uh, you, you know Ozil running about Shaka, uh, Pepe doing playing better than I've seen them play for Arsenal all, all season so uh, it depends now if, if he can keep that not that if he can keep it up but if he can get them to play in the manner in which they played against Manchester United who, by the way, were very disappointing again, uh, uh, Richie. But, but actually, we're talking about Arsenal. But mm. they, they, there was a, lot, a, bit, a bit of life about them. There's no no doubt, and they deserve to win the match. I mean, even Ozil was running back. It shows he can do it if he gets he gets gets somebody well to get a manager like Arteta. Now, the, the question now about Arteta: Can he get that week in and week out, Richie? That's the problem. You know, one match at the time is okay, but you got to get a consistency. But but anyway, we can't. He can't do any more than di- than he did. Arteta to get them going, get a good win under his belt, uh, and demand of them now that the, and they be prepared to do and work as hard as they did in that particular match. I know these kind of uh, unveiling press conferences are usually full of hot air, but I was kind of impressed by Arteta's a couple of weeks ago because he did point out that there does seem to be a malaise in terms of attitude and in terms of application at Arsenal. And that is something that he wanted to get right. And, you know, they flagged a little bit in the last 25 minutes. That's going to happen when they've got a new yeah. regime and they're probably working harder than they have been in recent weeks on the training ground. But it was heartening, I guess, from an Arsenal point of view to see that there was... Uh, correction in an attitude and that there was players like you mentioned like Ozil and like uh, Aubameyang who are prepared to work and prepared to put the shift in because it really hadn't been there for geez, God knows how long with Arsenal Well I can't remember it's just yeah. been bad all season I think that's the first match they've won there for three or four months or something uh, Richie it's, it's, it's scandalous really uh, 
But Arteta, I think, won't stand for any nonsense. And I think that's what he was saying before when he came in, that he, he wants players to do it. Give them a chance, which is fair enough. Give Ozil a chance to do it. But you have to ask the question, though, as well. Why has Ozil and Shaq and these guys been doing it before he came in? You know, like it's, it's, I think it's fine. It's out, I find it outrageous from professional footballers that they don't go, regardless of any circumstances, they don't go out and have a go. Uh, and, and earned a corn mm. uh, but it happens as we know uh, and Atel has made a good start and uh, well, he, he, he'd he be very happy with the performance I'd say Solskjaer would be very unhappy about the performance which is well, terrible again on the, on the Solskjaer thing people are I guess people used the comparison uh, the other night between Arteta and Solskjaer in that yes it was Arteta's first game in the job at Arsenal. But there seemed to be a definite idea of how a Mikel Arteta Arsenal will play. Mm. We're now beyond a year of Solskjaer being in the job at Old Trafford and there doesn't seem to be a sense of how he wants this United side to play. And I guess a lot of United fans are finding that very, very frustrating to get their heads around. That they're beyond counter-attack against the good sides, but against, you know, sides of their own level or lesser sides, they've struggled and they shouldn't struggle. And it seems to be a very, very odd situation and one that Solskjaer hasn't helped himself with. Well, I, I don't think he's able for the job, Richie, to be honest. You know, what, the, what, what Manchester United needed was a young Ferguson coming in who could get a hold of the place and get a hold of that. It's like, the, the Pogba situation is still going on. Like, is he going to play now? Now, now we had it at, at, at the weekend where he had his... He's, he's Mino Riola, is that his name? The, Riola's he's, agent, he's yeah. His agent coming into the picture because what he's saying, we need to, he needs an operation on his on his ankle. He's saying, not 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 Solskjaer sort of saying, yeah, I think he's right. But this, this like this has been dragging on for months and months. And Pogba is central to what's happening at Manchester United. Yeah. Like, could you imagine Ferguson putting up with what Pogba is going to be, be, be playing at? Well, on that, uh, Solskjaer was speaking today ahead of their um, FA Cup tie this weekend, right. and he was trying to clarify the Pogba situation in that he he basically said that Pogba's people had come to him and his people being his doctors, his own personal doctors, mm. and said that there is a different problem with that same ankle and that he requires surgery on it. And Solskjaer says that it is not unusual for a player to have their own relied upon doctors outside of the club. He said, Solskjaer, that he had it himself when he was at Manchester United and had his own knee problems, that he would often consult with doctors in Norway and in Sweden back home who would say, yeah, listen, Ollie, this needs looking at. You might want to consider surgery on this one. And it's a similar situation, he says, that Pogba has presented now, in that Pogba has his own doctor, as you would, as I would, who's gone, listen, you might want to have a look at this and it probably needs surgery. Well, it, it can happen, but it's not usual in a club. And, I mean, don't forget, this is coming coming back, uh, coming on the back of Riola saying last week that he wouldn't he wouldn't take any player into Manchester United. There, in fact, he was he was he was very influential in Haaland, the player that they were interested in, uh, going to Borussia Dortmund. Mm. He said he wouldn't let Madonna or anybody else or anybody go to Manchester United at the moment. So he's a huge influence. He's his his. Uh, Pogba's agent, don't forget, and pa- Pogba is listening to him. But I, I, I okay, so I, I say I believe Solskjaer in the medical situation at the moment. But what about everything else, Richie, about Pogba? When he plays, when he doesn't play, when he doesn't play at all, when he's out on the pitch, th- this is a big problem for Manchester United. It hasn't been addressed. All I hear from Solskjaer is, well, you know, he's a good lad and he's doing this and he's doing that. Well, I don't see that. I think Pogba is the main problem at Manchester United. And I think if Ferguson was there or any top manager, they'd have him out by now. He's but, troublesome. And he's troubling. He, he does it now and again on the pitch, Richie. Only now and again. But he's not worth the trouble, if, in my opinion. If Pogba, as is the case this season, hasn't actually played all that much, like he, he hasn't featured in Europe at all, uh, he's featured uh, very briefly in their in their league games, barely at all since September. Mm. If he's been absent for that long, surely it's the case that he's not actually the main problem for United's string of disappointing results. Like there are other issues there that seem to need addressing. Oh well, there's no doubt. I mean, it, there's big problems with Manchester United. Uh, you might, one of the big problems is, from Solskjaer's point of view. First of all, is he in charge of the players coming in? Is he in charge of the players going out? Is he actually is he actually managing the club? I have my doubts about that. 
And, uh, you know, if you don't have a manager managing the club in the way that Ferguson and, so, and all these great managers, the club, they control the situation. I don't get the feeling from, from Solskjaer that he's in control of the situation. And he keeps mentioning all sorts of things about Pogba. This is not the first time Pogba has kicked up, uh, 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 Richie, you know. I mean, is he in charge of the situation? He keeps saying, well, Pogba's a good lad. I've never had any trouble with him. Uh, you know, all this sort of carry on. But the main thing with Pogba is, has he played? When he played, is he the player that he's supposed to be? I don't think he is. And I don't think he's been great for Manchester United. All I see is, 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 is a troublesome individual in the club. Hmm. And we touched on Arteta there. There's actually been a, a great uptick in performances from sides who've gotten new managers in over the past couple of weeks. Mm. Uh, Watford, I guess, is the most noticeable. Their 2 and win over Wolves uh, yeah. the other day really caught the eye. And ditto for David Moyes. A lot yeah. was made of him going back to West Ham and that he mightn't be the man for them and that's a backward step, etc., etc. Can't argue with a 4-0 win at home. No, well, it's, it's a first match, Richie. You know, we, 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 ju we judge people after 10 matches or so. But managers going in can give players a lift. And in my experience with players as well, when, when they're not actually doing the stuff themselves and sometimes responsible for the results being bad, Richie, when a new manager comes in, they pick it up and have to prove that it wasn't their fault, it was the manager's fault. And that can last for a certain period of time and then it can, it, it can drift off again. You know, so we'll have to wait and see. But it's, it's, certainly, it's certainly a great start for the new managers uh, coming in. Definitely, there's, there's no doubt about that. But let, let's see after... 10, 12 matches, uh, Richie. We'll see what's what, you know. Well, I guess after 10, 12 matches, if Watford are still performing uh, the way they are now or have been under Nigel yeah. Pearson, they'll be staying up and ultimately that's the, the acid test for him in that of show. Of course. And for the other managers. You know, because I think what, what's a frightening for the new managers coming in doing well is that there's the teams that looked safe beforehand uh, are now very, very worried <laughs> about mm. the situation. Quite rightly. But, but, yeah, but only one game at a time. I think the lads that have come in have done a good job, but does, no doubt. Does this show that there is some merit behind there being somewhat short-term appointments for clubs? I mean, Watford have been, you know, case in point to that. I think is it Pearson's their third manager of the season. Um, they've been in this position before whereby they regularly rotated their coaches. Basically, if it's not working, get them out, get somebody else in, try yeah, and change as quick as possible. They haven't given them a chance. You know, they're, they're responsible for a lot of it. You know, they've, they've had good managers in there and you'd have to look, well, we'd have to know how does it work. Mm. Say the manager's done well and the end of the season, he say, oh, I want to get Joe Bloggs in and so-and-so, so-and-so. And, so and, so, and then, no, no, we're not doing that. So he's not getting what he wants. Then, then the results are bad and he's out. You know, it's not a good sign in the club because some of the managers that have been in there have done good jobs, Richie. And then you don't know, you don't know what's happened after that. Maybe they, they didn't get what they want and then they lose three matches or four matches or five matches to start the season and they're out. It, it, it's, it's not a good sign in the club either that to have that many managers. Mm. Uh, I guess a weekend off for some managers and some players this weekend when you consider it's the FA Cup third round and there'll be a lot of rotation and all that kind of thing. So a hell of a lot of football for you to get through between now and next Thursday, John, as well. We'll let you go and free some room up on that skybox. <laughs> Thanks, Richie. Cheers, I'll John. do my best. I'll try and watch them all. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, take care. And you, Richie. Bye. Bye-bye.